So I got up this morning and the strangest thing happened. I found myself for no reason at all, so filled with gratitude, so thankful to be alive that I didn't know what to do. I went out for a long run. I ended up running up and down the coastal foothills for an hour and 15 minutes. You know how long it's been since I have run up and down coastal foothills for 15 minutes? I just got back, haven't shaved, haven't showered, but I wanted to talk to you about the blessing because I'm so grateful for it and, and feel it so intensely right now. We're looking at how what's in unprecedented is not the troubles of 2020. Troubles are as old as history. There've been 400 years worth of troubles and stagnation and then God did a new thing when the word became flesh. And this is how it started. An angel came to an old man named Zechariah. Uh, we're told that Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth were righteous. That just means they were really, really good people. And they were devout. They, they observed all the commandments of the Lord uh, very carefully. But they were very old and they had no children. And the angel says to Zechariah, uh, God has seen you and God has blessed you and you're going to have a child. And Zechariah's response, well, how can I know this? I'm so old and my wife's really old. And so as a curse or maybe a blessing, Zechariah is silenced until that little baby is born. But Elizabeth becomes pregnant and she praises God. You have taken away my disgrace from among the people. And then her relative Mary, as we have seen, finds out that she's going to have a child. And so after she finds this out, she travels from her home into the hill country of Judea to visit Elizabeth. And the most remarkable thing happens. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb. This is the first case of fetal delight syndrome. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you will bear. Why am I so blessed that the mother of our Lord will come to meet me as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Now the word that keeps coming up here is blessing. Blessed are you. Blessed is the child that you will bear. Blessed is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. So let's talk about blessing for a moment. To bless is something that we do all the time, and we give or withhold blessings or we curse, whether we think about it or not. Um, your will is always oriented to the good of somebody or not oriented to the good of somebody. So we bless or we curse all the time, whether we're trying to or not. And we're very sensitive to this. We're very aware when we're with, we're with other people, just by their expressions, by the tone of their voice, by the words that they say. They are conduits of blessing. They will the good or they withhold blessing. There is no interaction that you have with another human being that, that does not give or withhold the blessing. And we're so sensitive to that. That's why there's some people that we long to be with because we know I will be blessed when I'm with you. You will the good for me, uh, or the blessing will be withheld. Now, God is a God of blessing, and this goes way back to Genesis. When God creates, God sees that what God makes is good, and God blesses it. God starts in Genesis when he blesses the fish, blesses his creation, and then blesses human beings. We were made to bless and we were made to receive blessings from other people. And that's what's going on in this text. Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit. And so she blesses so often in life, so many days, but not today. I go through life on autopilot. I'm looking down. I don't notice people. I don't see them. I don't see the wonder of each unique person that God made, that God loves, let alone the beauty of the world that God has blessed. But today I see Today, when I woke up, I felt the blessing of God. And that's what happens with Elizabeth. She is filled with the Spirit. And this is quite an extraordinary scene. We're told that uh, when she came to bless, she exclaims. Now, uh, this is a word that's used, Jack Levinson says, five times in the Old Testament of raucous, rowdy, rambunctious worship. So it's quite a loud word. But it's not just that. 
She exclaims with a voice. She exclaims with a loud voice. This is, uh, you know, pious, devout, old Elizabeth who just lets it rip. This is used only the other one at the time in the New Testament in the book of Acts when there is a violent outburst and the Romans are afraid Paul's going to get ripped to shred. That's the other time. This is a verse of great exuberant joy. Only metaphor that I could think of uh, that would be able to get this across. My son-in-law told me not long ago about the difference between people of Dubai and people of Abu Dhabi. And the difference is people in Dubai do not like the Flintstones, but Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> I love that. Nancy begged me not to say that, but I will. There's this character, Fred Flintstone, and when he had great joy, when he got a promotion, when it was a good day at the lodge, when he had a good time bowling with Barney, when Wilma gave him a great kiss, when he got a really good brontosaurus burger, nothing else would communicate it. Yabba dabba doo. Now that captures something of the raucous spirit that comes out of Elizabeth. She is so filled with joy. The baby is cartwheeling inside her womb. But I want to say something else. We don't simply express joy. We express joy to God. We bless God. There's a great theologian named Tom Oden, and he spoke many years ago at my alma mater, Fuller Seminary. Tom was a brilliant man, but over the years, he had kind of drifted so that there was not much of a belief in a robust personal God in him anymore. And a lot of his work just went from one social political movement to the next. He was living in a mainline world where that mostly went kind of left wing. In our day in the evangelical world, we sometimes see people drifting away from God to just uh, kind of primary allegiance to right-wing causes. And, and so Tom Oden had given a lecture, but there wasn't much about the God who makes himself known in it. And David Hubbard, who was then the president of Fuller Seminary, took Tom aside and uh, told him about that and said, you know, in ancient Israel, there was uh, a word of praise that was common in the ancient Mediterranean world, and that was Alelu. But in Israel, they did not say just Alelu. It was Alelu Yah. Yah is for Yahweh. This is the God who has revealed himself. The God who says, I am who I am, who has made himself known in the long history of his people Israel, and now supremely in Jesus. Not just Alleluia, but Alleluia. And that's what Elizabeth experiences, this great outburst of joy that causes her to be a blessing. She is blessed, but now wants to be a blessing. And here's the thing about blessing. Blessing is not primarily something that happens to you. It's mostly about what happens through you. I was thinking there would be a day when Mary would look back and all three of the other people on that scene, Elizabeth and her son, John the Baptist, and Mary's son, Jesus, would be dead. Jesus and John the Baptist, both executed by the state. And yet great blessing was yet to come. Great blessing was yet to come. So now this is your day. You be a blessing. When you wake up, if you haven't gotten out of bed yet this morning, you have a do. Just this is a day of blessing. When you see people. When I went out on that long run, uh, there would be people out walking a dog or getting the newspaper or walking with each other. And it, it struck me, I can bless each person that I see. I can say to them, this is a fantastic day, or man, you look terrific, or there were a group of bikers, and I said, you guys are taking the easy way. Once I was going up a hill, and I couldn't even get any words out, but I could do this, and I realized you can bless somebody with a single finger. You can curse somebody with a single finger. It all depends on which finger you choose, and it takes no more energy to do this one. I'm going to take a breath, a spirit breath anyway. As I was running, one of the thoughts that came to me was, John, tell people, the breath that is in you is my spirit breath. This is not your energy doing this. This is, this is not your body. It's my gift to you. So this is your day. Go bless people. Remember that the blessing is not just about what happens to you. It's not your circumstance. It's not how, how well your life is going right now. It is what happens through you. Today, today, Jesus has come. It's not yabba dabba do. It's yabba dabba do, yah. <laughs>